Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview and some benchmarks on this Mushkin Kronos 240GB SSD. Now Kronos, as we're all aware, is the personification of time in pre-Socratic philosophy. Uh, he was imagined as a god, serpentine in form, with three heads of a man, a bull, and a lion. He used to circle the primeval world egg and eventually helped to split it apart into the uh, ordered universe of earth, sea, and sky. Now, uh, Mushkin obviously is uh, going with Kronos as an indication of time because SSDs are fast and presumably the uh, personification of time in pre-Socratic literature was very fast. Um, apart from that, I should mention that Kronos is not to be confused with Kronos, uh, the titan who was Zeus's father. Okay, enough of the history lesson. Let's talk about this SSD because uh, it's made by Mushkin who has a long history of producing high quality memory for computers. Uh, this is a high performance SSD, uses top quality NAND flash, and it of course supports trim. So if you're using it in the proper trim environment, such as using Windows 7 or later, uh, you can get the garbage collection that is very necessary in SSDs to help them keep performing at their peak. Now I should also mention while I'm talking about the box here, there's a few uh, Kronos uh, SSDs in the series. This is uh, more of the entry level. This one's going to be a bit more of a bargain prospect. Uh, but they also have the Kronos MX, which uses synchronous NAND as opposed to the asynchronous NAND that's used in this one. They also have the Kronos Deluxe, which uses premium Toshiba toggle NAND. Uh, so there's sort of the product line from uh, Mushkin. Now uh, here's some more information on the back of the box about some of the other Mushkin products. That's about it, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. Inside the box we have a bit of clamshell packaging. Popping that open we can see we have a 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch drive bay adapter. So if you're using a case that doesn't have 2.5 inch drive mounts, uh, which are useful for SSDs that are 2.5 inch uh, form factor. You can use this little uh, drive adapter, so you mount the SSD on top right here, bolt it in from the bottom, and then that should fit in most standard 3.5 inch drive bays. Also in here you have a couple sets of screws, one set to mount the SSD to this adapter and another set to mount the adapter into your case. That's pretty much all for accessories, you get that and of course the SSD itself. Here's a closer look at this drive. It is a SATA Revision 3 drive, so it uh, can operate on the SATA Revision 3 bus. Of course, it's also backwards compatible with SATA Rev 1 and Rev 2. Uh, Rev 3 gives you a total throughput of 6 gigabits per second, and I would definitely recommend, if you are going to be purchasing this drive, connecting it to a SATA Rev 3 port, because uh, if you connect it to Rev 2, you will actually be limiting the performance of this drive. Here in the back, we can see the standard SATA connector for data and power. Also, of course, a nice look at the finish on the drive, which is sort of a charcoal gray. It's a fairly uh, simple drive design, of course, as most 2.5 inch drives are. Here's a look at it from the side. We do have a nine millimeter height, so bear that in mind. This uh, will not fit in seven millimeter height capacity, uh, which is required for some notebooks and ultrabooks, for example. Uh, apart from that, it's got sort of a, a thin taper around the edge. Kronos logo, of course. Uh, drive capacity and whatnot. And uh, next up, I'm going to do what it tells you not to do here, which is to, if you remove screws or labels, you'll void the warranty. Let's go ahead and void that warranty for this drive and don't do this at home. So with our screws removed, we can open up the cover here and take a look at this SSD's naughty bits. Get it? Naughty bits? Okay. Uh, so here on the inside, we have a single PCB. On this side, we have four NAND packages. And on the opposite side, we have our controller. And I was actually kind of surprised that this only has four NAND packages. Total capacity on this drive, at least raw, unformatted, is 256 gigabytes, and that's by way of four 64 gigabyte NAND chips. Now, the uh, controller over here is a Sandforce. That is the Sandforce SF2281, uh, more specifically the 2281VB1, which is uh, located right there, of course. That's going to be controlling uh, basically the interface between uh, your computer. It's going to be handling read and write commands over to the NAND right there. It's an eight channel controller and uh, it performs quite well. One of the things that actually excels at is gonna be compression because this controller performs on the fly compression. So if you're dealing with compressible data, writing it to the drive, that's where you're gonna see the most performance and you will see that borne out in our testing. Now another uh, few things to note apart from the controller, of course, NAND itself uh, is Intel 25 nanometer asynchronous NAND. Again, 464 gigabyte packages, and um, I was not able to confirm for sure, but I believe that this is two die per package, um, which if you're into NAND, that might be of use. 
useful information to you. Now, if you're into math, you might realize, well, this has 256 gigabytes of raw capacity. How come the drive is only 240 gigabytes? So there's a few things that that extra 16 gigs is doing, and most of that's going to be handled by the Sandforce controller right there. One is called over-provisioning, and that's simply setting some of the storage aside, and that is because after all, you've used a drive for a very long time, eventually some of the storage cells can wear out, over-provisioning sets some of that aside so if it does encounter uh, cells that have become st steady state, which means that the cell can no longer be written to but can still be read, it can jump over to some of the over-provisioned storage area and make use of that. Uh, another feature is garbage collection and that is simply uh, well, if you want to know more about garbage collection, we have an SSD tutorial video on our uh, YouTube channel. You can check that out if you want to know what garbage collection actually does. But um, that's one of the things it's going to be doing is garbage collection. That's part of the trim function that you will definitely want to have enabled if you're installing this in uh, Windows or other trim compatible operating system environments. And then the finally, th final thing is caching, and that is uh, one thing that you'll notice on SSDs. Sandforce controllers actually use the NAND on the drive itself for caching, whereas some other drives will have a separate like DDR or DDR3 chip uh, that's on there. Uh, the Sandforce controller is actually going to set aside part of the NAND. It's going to use that to cache data before it actually performs the read-write operations, and uh, that's just simply part of how the Sandforce controller works. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our benchmarks. We have now jumped over here to my test bed and I'm going to share some benchmark numbers with y'all. I also wanted to do a, a quick correction. Uh, the actual drive height on this is 9.3 millimeters as opposed to the 9 millimeters that I mentioned. So a little bit taller, but just bear that in mind. Uh, and the manufacturer stated specifications, max sequential read 560 megabytes per second, max sequential write 525, up to 90,000 input output operations per second. So we're going to see if this drive can actually hit those numbers. Uh, first off, a look at the test bed. Uh, we're running on an X79 platform. We're using an Intel Core i7-3960X. Uh, we're on an Asus Sabertooth X79 motherboard. Uh, we're running uh, 16 gigs of DDR3 memory. And apart from that, uh, we're currently running the 5.0.4, which is the latest firmware for this particular drive. So there's our configuration. We're going to start off with ASSSD, which is a popular SSD-centric benchmarking utility. And one thing I want to point out about this drive, as opposed to some other drives, is we're using asynchronous NAND. We're also using a Sandforce controller that does a lot of compression on the fly. So if you're using compressible data, uh, you can see some very impressive numbers. If you're not using compressible data, such as the random data that's generated for these tests, uh, you're not going to see the exact same numbers. So if you benchmark this at home, I'll show you guys uh, how you can adjust your synthetic benchmarks to hit those numbers as stated by the manufacturer. But first off, uh, here are our, our results for ASSSD. This is the same test. I'm just showing uh, input-output operations per second on the left and um, reads and writes in megabytes per second here on the right. Overall score was 395. Uh, our access time was 0.133 and 0.262 milliseconds, respectively, for reads and writes. And then our overall read and write speeds, 208.94. Uh, for read, 154.51 for writes, that's sequential. For 4K, we got just under 20 and just under 100. Overall input-output operations per second for our 4K 64-thread 60, test, 26,000 for read and just over 16,000 for writes. As mentioned, these are using, oops, these are using uh, incompressible data. So here's another test that you can run with ASSSD. This is the compression benchmark. So the chart down here is level of compression. So as you get up to 100% compression with the data that you are writing, you'll notice the drive's performance scale. So the red line here is write, the green line here is reads, and up towards the top they max out at right around 460, 470 megabytes per second in this test, as opposed to down here at zero compression when it's hitting about 150 to 200 megabytes per second. Uh, we also ran the uh, integrated ASSSD copy benchmark, which just uh, generates some data that's more typical for use with like an ISO program in our game. There are the results for those. And then we'll jump ahead to Atto. And Atto is one of the more popular benchmarking utilities used by manufacturers. And actually, if you look on the Mushkin website, you will notice that the um, top speeds uh, rated for this drive are measured with Atto, and they're measuring at Q-depth of 10. Q-depth of 10 is something that you rarely ever hit when you're using when you're using this on a typical desktop. So I ran this at Q-depth of 4, and uh, here with the higher uh, test transfer sizes, you can see it does transfer sizes from 0.5 kilobytes all the way up to about uh, 8 megabytes. I'm, I'm sorry, 8 gigabytes. Uh, and then uh, down here at the bottom, we can see we are hitting more, the, more so the numbers that are advertised. So we got out to actually about 5 
140 megabytes per second right there. We hit uh, almost 550 megabytes per actually just over 550 megabytes per second on the reads. I also ran this at Q-depth 10. There I'm just going to jump back and forth. So see how the charts here jump up a little bit. There we go. Let me jump to Q depth of 10. So that's just uh, giving the drive a bit more to work with a bit more quickly when you enhance the Q depths. Uh, but here we can see again we hit uh, about 540 megabytes per second on the writes, and here we topped 550 megabytes per second on the reads, and that is about in line with uh, the rated specifications that are listed by Mushkin. The next test is the Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test, and this is simply a test that you can run on any drive, and it will tell you uh, if the, dri the drive is suitable for working with uh, video specifically and uh, different types of video levels of compression and levels of detail. Uh, but we hit on the writes uh, right in the 155 to 160 megabytes per second. In the reads, of, uh, we managed to get over 200 megabytes per second, and there you can see all the results in the chart at the bottom. All right, next up we're running Crystal Disk Mark, and Crystal Disk Mark is a test that is fairly unique in that uh, you can tell it what type of data to use. So um, this is actually our compressible data test. And you can see over here we're hitting right around 500 megabytes per second. If I jump to the incompressible data test, there's the difference, as I mentioned, on the fly compression being able to, uh, to be performed by our Sanford controller really helps if you're using compressible data. So with incompressible, we hit 211 and 162 respectively. Uh, we did hit, hit some pretty nice input-output operations per second down here, just under 40,000 and uh, just over 22,000, or maybe just under 23,000 would be better to say. However, when we jump to uh, compressible data, so this is a zero fill setting with Crystal Disk Mark, we get over 500 megabytes per second for the write, really nice performance there. 491 megabytes per second for the read. 4K uh, Q, uh, 4K tests down here are really important if you're actually uh, sort of determining how this is going to affect day-to-day -day use. Because if you're using your computer, you're not going to be doing a whole lot of sequential reads and writes unless you're working with really large files that you're copying over and over again. 4K is much more common. So if you pay more attention to these tests down here, compare them in different SSDs that you might be considering, and that will give you a better idea of the performance there. But here on the left side, we can see the sort of broken out detail for the Q-Depth 32 tests here. And here's where we hit that rated uh, 90,000 IOPS uh, for the drive, as mentioned in the drive's uh, literature. Uh, 89,360 to be specific was what I was able to hit, and uh, just under 30,000 for the random reads. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. While I'm at it, I should mention that apart from the 240 gig version of this drive that we have here, it's also available in 60 gig, 90 gig, 120 gig, 180 gig, 240, as well as 480 gig capacities. Uh, bear in mind, you might get slight changes in performance as you jump from capacity to capacity. But uh, that's all for this one. Once again, this has been the Mushkin Kronos 240 gigabyte SSD. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.